Hey guys, Scanner Danner here. Today we're working on a 2005 Chevy Equinox and the symptoms of this car, it's a no start. Um, I'm at my friend Latour's Auto and what he had done to the vehicle is replace the fuel pump and that was replaced because the fuel pump fuse kept blowing, the pump was seized and um, anyway uh, the car is still not starting and i walked through some steps over the phone with pete and what to do we verified fuel pressure verified spark and found that we had no power going to our fuel injectors and then that brought us to a main relay that controls power and that's kind of where i ended with the phone conversation with him so what I want to do with you guys is walk you through those steps that I walked Pete through and see if we can quickly diagnose this fault on this vehicle. You get your fuel pressure gauge for this uh, that you guys used yesterday. Yeah, fine. Okay, first step after changing a fuel pump that's blowing a fuse, right? Isn't that what it was, Pete? Fuse kept blowing for the fuel pump. That's why the uh, pump was changed. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, all right. So um, first thing would be obviously to verify our fuel pressure after new pump replacement. Tim, can you crank that for me, buddy? Whoa, uh, that, just that charger, um, move that negative lead a little bit, scared me. And then we got all that fuel, yeah. That would have been interesting, huh? All right, good, crank that again. Okay, hold on. One more time. Okay, good. All right, so we have 55 pounds of fuel pressure. Okay, next step, we wanna check for spark. Just using a simple incandescent test light. You do not wanna use an LED test light for this. An LED test light, you'll burn it up. What I wanna do is take one plug wire off of this coil assembly. This is a waste spark system. And I'm just gonna have my test light connected to ground, put an air gap there, and go ahead and crank it, Pete. Keep cranking. Okay, good. All right, we have spark. There is no reason to check the rest of these just simply because the car isn't even trying to start. So that tells me spark is good across the board. We have fuel pressure, we have spark. Next step is to check for injection pulse. And this one, this engine design was difficult to do, but we were able to get to one injector. Where was that at, Pete? The one I had you check over the phone. Okay, it's on that side. Let me move the camera. You see the intake manifolds covering all the injectors, so a quick injection pulse test where I was trying to walk Pete through this over the phone where all he's using is a test light was a little bit difficult, but we do have one injector we can get to, and it's right here in this location where my index finger is. I'll get you zoomed in on that. We'll just do some real quick back probing of this fuel injector to see if we have power and then if we have injection pulse. So we have a pink wire and it looks like a yellow and black. This is cylinder six, I believe. Get you guys on the wiring diagram here in a minute. Uh, I wanna make sure that my test light. Always check your test light, always check it. Yeah, I can't really get to that very easily, Pete. It's a little warm today, isn't it? It's a little humid. It's okay, I'm trying to get the other pizza off. <clears throat> you just weren't cool enough, Pete. Okay, I just unplugged this. Uh, electrical connection so you guys can see what I'm doing better. I really couldn't back probe it from where I was. So I'm gonna use this kit that I have. What I want is a terminal that will be equal to this fuel injector connector. I don't wanna spread the terminals apart. The last thing you wanna do is take a test light with this kind of probe on it and stuff it into a female connector and spread it apart. So I'm using the correct terminal here for this. And that one's a little bit too thick even. So let's get a different one. Forcing test leads into a connector is never a good thing. But this will allow me now to 
access this and we'll check it for power and then we will uh, check it for injection pulse just using a simple test light I've, I've not connected a scan tool to this car i do not care this is some basic troubleshooting that we're doing again i've moved my ground so i've tested my light that's good um hey pete or tim can you can you crank this for me ready yes go ahead okay i got not all right got nothing on that pin and that was my power feed so we are we are missing power to this injector stay there pete i need you to crank it again my ground lead came off on my i'm not even that far yet oh ground lead come off yeah. hang on relocated my ground lead it fell off and anytime you do that while you're doing electrical testing especially when you're missing a power feed make sure your light works make sure your ground is still good i'm going to go back to that power feed one more time this is the feed side of the fuel injector go ahead and crank it all right good nothing there and then this will be the injection pulse side so what i want to do now is switch my test light to battery positive and when i touch a ground my light should light okay and then for this what we want to see is the computer firing this fuel injector watch the light go ahead and crank it let me zoom in on my light you see that timmy yes, sir. you need to learn this test so i can walk you guys through this one over the phone i think i've taught it to you before this is our computer injection pulse test test light again the battery positive go ahead and crank it okay so we have injection pulse we have spark we have fuel pressure what we're missing is power to our fuel injectors and this is exactly what i walked pete through over the phone we need to grab a wiring diagram now and i can show you guys where um, our power comes from and then we'll do some checks right here at this fuse box you're on film pete say hi to everybody all right boys and girls going to system wiring diagrams and what we want to do is go to our engine performance diagram figure out where our injectors are getting our power from you see right here on page one we have our pink wire that's the one i was testing for power it's not there the uh, yellow black right here is the one i was checking for pulse it is there so this power feed on this pink wire comes down to four which would be on the next page pink wire next page on four comes over here up this way and it goes to our injector fuse so the next step would be to check that injector fuse for power and i'll show this to you guys and what we're going to find here is no power on either side of the fuse and so then that goes to a says a uh, engine main relay diagram three of four so let's go down to the third page there's my engine main relay right here and here's my injector fuse i had pete also test this emiss the emiss probably emission fuse purge valve and evap probably uh, vent um, there was no power there either and so that backed us up to the relay and if you look at the relay there's a hot all the time right here and what i had pete do was remove this relay and check for two power feeds if you look at the circuit this circuit here the load and the control both share the same power feed and it was good and from that point i said stop can't go any further well, i need to uh, come down and take a look at it my suspicion is this brown wire the control for the relay um, by the engine computer it's it's not being controlled so that brown wire let's follow that real quick pin seven goes to the next page it's not pin sorry seven comes over here and then goes to the pcm relay so it's a ground side switched control uh, transistor in the computer grounds the brown wire which does what it will energize the coil on the engine main relay 
make a magnetic field, and then it will close the switch, powering up the injectors and the emiss emission fuse. Um, none of that's happening. So let's go to the relay. Let's go to the fuse, uh, the injector fuse, emission fuse. I'll show you those checks next. All right, so test light is gonna be connected to ground. Had some difficulty getting a good ground on this aluminum intake that's all oxidized. Always check your light. Again, light is not lighting. Ground is bad. You're doing troubleshooting. You have to be able to rely on your ground. Very, very common mistake. All right, so now what I need to know is my layout here. And fortunately, GM labels theirs. This is my engine main relay right here. My emiss fuse, emission fuse, is this one next to it. The ETC fuse was also on that circuit. And the injector fuse is right here as well. There's one, two, three, this one right here. So our, this is our fuel pump fuse. This is the one that was blown from a seized up pump, okay? The injector fuse is this one here. No power on either of those. And then same thing, this emiss fuse is dead and so is the ECT or ETC fuse. All right, so just so you guys can get a better shot of what I'm showing you here, when you check fuses, you wanna make sure that a fuse, just touching the back side of the fuse, make sure the fuse is lit on both sides so it's good there and it's good there that's a good fuse and this is my uh let's make sure i'm reading the right ones to you that was my ac clutch this is my ecm fuse the next one down is injectors you see we're not lit there and then check the other side if this side is lit and this side is not then what you have is a blown fuse now when either side is not lighting you have a problem on a power feed to the fuse. So it's not a fuse problem, and that's where we went through the diagram and found out where the problem come, or where the power comes from, which is this engine main relay. So your next step on a relay is to make sure that you have two power feeds. That's pretty standard relay testing. Make sure you have two power feeds on your relay, which is what I had Pete do, and I wasn't worried about what pin was what over the phone. I just wanted to know what all four were doing. Again, just using an adapter from that kit. So I'm not spreading terminals. And I'm looking for two power feeds. Ed, can you turn the key on for me, please? Okay, just going through all, all four pins. That's lit there. It's lit there. So I have my two power feeds. Then uh, what we have is the load would go to the injectors and then the last one would be control, these top two pins that are on this relay. We got power here, we have power here, and then we should have load and then control. So I should be able to look at the relay and uh, figure that out. Goes this way, the bottom two is these two, and those are 30 and 86. So 30 is on the left, so this is my load here to the injectors, to these other fuses, and this would be the control circuit right here. And the control, we can test that uh, with the key on, that should be grounded. This should be a circuit that's grounded with the key on. And uh, what I can do is take my test light to battery positive. You could also at this point, and we did this, I had Pete switch the relays over the phone, nothing happened. So. Um, uh, but let's focus on this computer control pin for a minute. Test light's gonna go to battery positive now. Always check your light. This should be a grounded circuit right now, and it is not. Now there's no real inputs that are needed other than ignition feeds to the ECM. And given the fact that we have injection pulse and we have spark, it's telling me the computer has all of the powers and grounds it needs and that most likely what we have is an open circuit between this relay box and this engine computer on that, on that terminal. Now we can prove it. If I put the relay back in, um, we can jump the circuit and make things work. Let me, let me grab a different tool. 
you guys have seen me use this tool in uh, other videos. This is called a, a U-Activate tool. It's made by AES, that other kit I was using with, with these terminals here is also made by AES. If you guys are interested in any of these tools, I will link them in the description of this video so you guys can find them. Uh, but this tool is nice because all the, t all the tests that I just showed you here at the relay can be done using this tool. And there's adapters for different relays. The relay adapter I want will match it up to what we have. This is gonna plug into the relay circuit. This will plug into the tool and it's actually uh, designed in a way that you cannot mix up the loads and controls. This will only plug into the tool one way, okay? And what we can do with this tool is we're essentially being the relay. I can turn this circuit on, which is this, the load side switch, and then we can check the rest of the circuit, the load side, the injector feed. So watch, I'll turn this, this on. We just heard the throttle control motor um, do something, telling me that the circuit's now alive. Let's go back to a known good ground. Check our ground with our positive source we're good there and now my injector fuse should be showing me power as you can see it is so here's my relay bypass tool right and with it with it set up like this the car should run I still have this fuel injector unplugged too so let me plug that back in and I can show you guys the missing power feed to this fuel injector as well so there's my power feed to my injector now. Again, turn this switch off. No power, switch on, power. All right, let me plug this injector back in. Pete, can you see if this thing runs with my tool jumpered in here? It should. If it starts, just shut it right back off. Did you shut that off that quick or did it stall? Let it run for a couple more seconds. Leave it run. I'm gonna stall it with this. Turn this off. Okay, cool. Okay, something else. Um, Pete, sorry, stay there. I need you to be my key guy. Something else we can do with this tool, not just activate circuits, but what we can do is actually check the control. See, they have an LED right here for the coil circuit. So that LED should be lit. When uh, Pete turns the key on, gotta do it. So that light's not lit, telling me I have no control on here. So what you can do, test light's still connected to ground. We can check, there is your, um, feed for your control and on this circuit um, the reason that my light actually lit is it's getting a ground through my bulb now um, so that's a little bit misleading but that is what we want to see we want to see that light light if the computer is providing a ground here and it's not we're missing our computer ground that was my suspicion going into this the other thing you can do you can actually check the load side of the circuits here load side feed and then the switched side right so you can do checks without doing them at the box you can do them right here on this tool and then the last piece which is super cool you can put an amp clamp around here and whatever the load is you can measure that load and i've done this in a few other videos i'll, I'll put some links in the description of this on some other videos where i was using this u activate tool but i really like this it's very very helpful uh, in our case, again, we're missing a control from the computer right here to this relay. There is evidence of rodents. Uh, this is all up on the wiper cowl area. We got some rodents here, man. So um, I'm gonna do a visual inspection right here on this harness. It can't be far. In fact, I just looked right there, it looks green and corroded, right on the corner of that box. Let's, uh, let's do a little digging here. Just visual inspection here, guys. Yeah, it doesn't get more simple than that. So for those of you that don't know, I teach at a technical college, Rosedale Technical, 
College in Pittsburgh. And this is one of the things that I tell my students all the time. Where do you find an open in a circuit? That's what we have, an open between our box and our engine computer. And I always say points of contact, heat and vibration, heat and vibration. So by vibration, what I'm talking about is something that is rubbing on another component within the harness. And that's what you have right here, right here. You have a, a, a point of contact between the box and this harness. And when I lift up on that, look at all the green corrosion that's underneath that. That is exactly where my harness is gonna be damaged. This is not gonna be very easy to repair given its location. However, can you guys see that? Is that focused on that enough? Let's make sure you can see it. Usually these LED lights interfere. Yeah, you can see that now. Um, needle nose, keep my hands out of there. Look at the harness when I lift this up. See all the green cruddies under that? That's where our open's gonna be. I have no doubt. In fact, if I plug this relay back in and wiggle this connection, we may actually hear the relay circuit being energized. Maybe not, that wire is probably too far gone at this point. Let's try it though. Nope. That's where our issue is. So we gotta pull this box apart. You got a razor blade, Timmy? There's the rub through on the tape. Points of contact, heat and vibration, right? Just rubbing on plastic, a, a harness rubbing on plastic. There was no modifications done to this vehicle at all. That is a, a flaw in the manufacturer, if you ask me, uh, but find that wire what color was it it was brown and something I have to look at the diagram again that is our exact wire it's the one wire too yeah the, the computer control wire guys is brown and here you go Timmy and Pete who are my audience here here's your break oh my right here the wire is not broken yet till I pull on it it's gonna break let me get zoomed in on that so everybody can see it here's your break right here brother watch ready there's your there's your broken wire Ooh. right there uh. <sighs> uh, I need some a pair of dikes I'm gonna strip this back and see if we have any other broken wires under here if that's the only one go figure that is that is the only wire damaged here, Pete. That's actually cool. I, I, we'll be able to fix it right here, I hope. Do you have any um, the heat shrink style butt connectors with you, Pete? Here, listen, I'll touch these two together. You guys will hear the throttle body activate, listen. Cool, nice. And then the other thing I can show you too is this relay. This is the computer control pin right here. We'll go back to battery positive. Check our test light, touch here and then touch these two wires together. My test light should light. Okay, that is our brake. Let me show you one more piece, which is what this tool should do. Again, you can use this tool to troubleshoot. So you see this 
you see this LED light that's lit right here. That's your computer, that's your coil power and ground makes that light light. Watch what happens when I take the ground away, which is move that wire away. So there you go, you can use the tool here to troubleshoot as well. Let's fix this wire and get this car out of here, Pete. Uh, I'm just gonna use your dikes because of where this is located. It's really not gonna be easy to do. Thinking about using dikes for this is you don't want to cut the tubing and you will have a tendency to to uh, squeeze too tight and cut it in half but we're given the location I don't really have much of a choice Hey Pete, yeah. I need you for a minute. I need you to hold this pair of, hold this right here. Because when I push this butt connector on, it wants to push that wire back into the box. I really just don't want to take the box apart right now. And I know you don't want me to either. This is uh job we need to get done and out of here but we also want it to be a good fix and not come back right Pete right. you did good over the phone brother Pete was able to follow all my directions this is exactly what we thought our problem was didn't we yeah I said open in the wire between the two, or faulty computer, but chances of that are slim to none. On a relay controlled circuit, it's just not something that uh, fails ever. The only time I've had a failed driver on a relay circuit was one that I caused myself by jumping the wrong pins, cooking a computer. All right, you can let that go. Van was bad. What's that? The one-ton van. I don't remember. The one was all corroded. Oh yeah, well that was moisture intrusion on that. That was a different ball game. I'm talking about like the one specific driver for a relay. I've just never seen it. Heat shrink butt connectors, never leave home without them. These things are awesome. I actually found a, a kit for these too, guys. I'll put a link for that as well. Um, I found a 50 count, a 50 count of these butt connectors for like $9 from JB Tools. I've been using them and they do have this sealant that comes out when you, when you shrink them. These have a sealant that comes out of it that uh, makes it a weather pack, a weather tight seal. So they're good ones too. So again, don't forget to check out the description of this video for tools and other stuff. All right, let's get the relay in here. And uh, this vehicle should start. Pete, you wanna start that up for me, buddy? Leave it run if it will.
Leave it run, Pete. Oh, I was trying to make it run. This is real loose, too. Yeah. What else was done to this wire? Hey, Pete. Turn the key off and wait five seconds, buddy. All right, guys, start this up, Pete. Watch your head, Timmy. Is that idling on its own now? Yeah. Okay, cool. I think what was happening, why it wouldn't stay running, is I had this main relay that I was energizing while the key was already on. So what we had, it was a dead throttle body, the actuator for the drive-by wire, and the computer was not liking the fact that that motor wasn't powered up either. I don't know what all was on that relay, but clearly when I uh, fixed this circuit, we could hear the throttle actuator control motor moving. So that was why it was start, stall, start, stall. See if that revs okay now, Pete, please. Because it sounded like it had a misfire. Where's your Schrader valve cap for this um, service port? All right, cool. That's what we want to hear. Well, guys, that was a nice, simple one. Pete, nice job on uh, following directions over the phone and giving me a good guide as to where I was going with this today. Uh, open circuit control side of a relay ground side switch circuit uh, for more information for more training on diagnostics and troubleshooting i want to refer you to my uh, my classroom channel i'm going to call it that scanner danner premium where i invite you into my classroom at rosedale technical college you will find uh, a link right here for my channel you guys can click on that and subscribe there is a 14 day free trial you will not be disappointed. I have hundreds of hours of classroom lectures on, for example, ground side switching of a relay, uh, a driver test for a computer. This will be chapter three material in my book, in my classroom. So hope to see you guys over there. Thanks for joining me. Nice, simple one, open circuit. See you next time.